And here's a place in our story that's almost a character in its own right. Legendary Mena, Arkansas, home of more rumors of Contra gun running and drug smuggling and covert black ops than any other spot on the face of the earth. There's an old saying in Hollywood about movie endings. Jaws ain't over till the sheriff meets Corey the shark. And that's what we'll see on the historic runway. The first meeting of Lawman Welch and daring drug smuggler Billy Bob Bear Bottoms. A genuine Louisiana piece of work, as anyone with two nicknames can be assumed to be. Well, what the Mina story means to me is, uh, I have a term for it, I call it the Mina myth. But what Mina was to Barry Seal's operation was uh, our transportation operation for the cartel was based out of Louisiana. And we would uh, put our fixed wing airplanes at MENA. Uh, we would have repairs or modifications made here. And plus, it was a diversion. Where does this mammoth industry hide? Picture hundreds of car plants. On a practical level, imagine having to hide every auto plant in the country, every factory and dealership. Can you imagine hiding 100 auto plants like this one? It's hard to conceive, isn't it? Guess what? Drugs are bigger. So, how do you hide a $130 billion a year industry from a government that has cameras that can read the make of your golf ball from outer space? I don't think you can. Maybe we're being lied to. When we come back, I'll tell you why. Welcome back. So, are we being lied to about the American war on drugs? And if so, why? Well, the answer to the second question is easy. It would have to be, wouldn't it? Money. Lots and lots of easy, corrupting money. There have been reports for years and years that elements of our nation's covert intelligence have been financing their black operations, their secret operations, that is, through the sale of narcotics. But this brings up an almost unimaginable question. Could elements of our government be involved in the drug trade? That's what we wanted to know. So first we applied our do pigs fly test. I mean, if they flew, you'd have read about it in the literature, right? Bore news would have had big, bold headlines. Government tests confirm pigs fly in Middale. And guess what? There is a ton of literature on your favorite bookstore shelves devoted to a scholarly subject called CIA drugs detailing how and why national intelligence agencies like ours and others did a little bit more than just dabble in drugs. But the biggest impact might have been made here. On January 20th, 1993, William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd President of the United States. At the time, most Americans were not aware of the extent of Clinton's criminal background, nor were they aware of the media blackout which kept this information from the public. It's called, of course, the Clinton Chronicles, and it might just herald a whole new medium. The hijacking of America was underway, and its impact on future generations would be incalculable. Probably millions of people have seen a video that has gotten zero mention in the mainstream media, and hardly any on television. Many people first heard of the train deaths and its connection to Mina from it. As we say in Hollywood, the story's got legs. In 1982, cocaine trafficker Barry Seal set up one of the largest drug smuggling operations in the United States in Mina, Arkansas, under the approving eye of Governor Bill Clinton. Barry Seal had a bunch of planes and supposedly had pilots. Barry Seal was a, was a drug smuggler. And he tried to set it up in his home state of Louisiana but they wouldn't let him. He had to come to a state that had a sleazy governor. Tonight, we've got startling new revelations that completely change our portrait of this man, Barry Seal. But first, note what's gone before. When Seal ran cocaine through Mena, Arkansas, Bill Clinton wasn't president of the United States or vice president. Running American foreign policy wasn't Governor Clinton's job. That job belonged to this man, George Bush who also ran the Reagan administration's National Security Council, giving him a heady list 
of powerful functions. And while President Reagan reportedly often preferred Leave it to Beaver reruns over his daily 2 p.m. intelligence briefings, one guy who was apparently wide awake was Bush. Others in this story were and are household names, CIA Director William Casey. And of course, any discussion of drug smuggling in the 1980s is incomplete without a discussion of this man's role. Oliver North apparently had a real preoccupation with drugs in the 1980s. No, he wasn't using them, but there's been a lot of talk that he was selling them to fund the war in Nicaragua. Even Gorbanifar knew that you were supporting the Contras. Yes, he did. His Vestia knew it. The name had been in the papers in Moscow. It had been all over Danny Ortega's newscast. Radio Havana was broadcasting it. It was in the, every newspaper in the land. All our enemies knew it, and you wanted to conceal it from the United States Congress. We wanted to be able to deny a covert operation. But if you listen to this woman, former head of a federally funded drug task force, ridiculing Oliver North may be letting him off too easy. It wasn't until the time frame after Oliver North got involved in MENA that there was so much drug activity. So listen as we tell you the train death story and see if you can hear beneath it the secret heartbeat of America. The subjects of drug and covert intelligence take place in a murky arena filled with disinformation. Information on this level is superbly managed for plausible deniability. So we decided that if you wanted to find the truth about possible U.S. government corruption in drug smuggling in the 1980s, you would have to look around the periphery. You would have to look out of the corners of your eyes. So we're not looking for the smoking gun, but for the bent twigs, the people whose lives have been lost or changed or whose careers have been ruined. This woman, Linda Ives, lost her son. She thinks our government was involved. Another significant connection was made to the MENA drug smuggling operation when it was learned that witnesses had identified two police officers beating two boys, fitting the description of Kevin and Don that night earlier uh, at a little grocery store near the area where they were put on the train tracks. Uh, these two officers were identified as, uh, by witnesses as Kirk Lane and Jay Campbell, former Benton Police Department cops, uh, then Pulaski County narcotics officers. Uh, one of those officers, Jay Campbell, is very good friends with Dan Lassiter, uh, has known him since he was 13 years old. And Dan Lassiter is? Dan Lassiter is um, a convicted drug dealer, very good friends, financial supporter of Governor Bill Clinton. So, is this a Clinton crazy story? Mrs. Ives is definitely not a fan. Bill Clinton's connections are questionable, the company that he keeps, uh, convicted drug dealers. I think that uh, the evidence is overwhelming that Bill Clinton knew what was going on in Mena, Arkansas, and made no... Uh, efforts to investigate or eradicate. But I can't see anything here but a bereaved mother trying to make sense of the loss of a child. You know, I guess I probably am amazed um, that my family could be swept up into uh, anything of this magnitude. Uh, certainly, we were nobodies, and uh, in the overall scheme of things, Kevin was nobody to anybody but us. Um, certainly, I don't believe Kevin was a threat to much of anybody. I don't think he would have particularly recognized officials, um, law enforcement officers, whoever was there. Um, I find it very, very difficult to understand um, uh, the mentality that allows them to not only murder them viciously and brutally, um, but to sweep them under the rug like a piece of garbage. The train deaths case is not just another famous unsolved mystery. It's got political ramifications of national significance because, and stop me if you've heard this one before, massive government cover-up of the deaths by state officials in Arkansas. But that's getting ahead of ourselves a natural human tendency in a postmodern age. We all want to see the big picture at a glance.